Hello students, the purpose of this short video is to explain how void functions work in C++. Here we have a program that when you run it at this address right now, unless it's moved at some point in the future, this website address is one where you could get this a copy of this and fork it and make the changes that I'm about to make to it. So the program doesn't do anything interesting other than teach you important principles of uh, the, the flow of control, the order of operations, the top-down nature of a typical computer program like this one that you see in C++. When the program first executes, that is when you click the Run button here at Replit, uh, a bunch of stuff is read into the computer's memory behind the scenes, some imports. But these declaration statements, those are simply warnings to the computer from the coder, you, that there are these four unique functions that you made up and that this is how you spell their names. Now, inside of the curly braces of the main function, these functions will probably be used or in other words, called into action. So looking closely, we see that right here on line 30, the function display title is being called. So it's the first one that gets used. And that's why after C out in main, we see evidence over here in my output window that in display title shows up. But here's exactly why in display title shows up. Because when you call a function that you properly declared above in main, with a line of code like that, that has a semicolon there, by the way, it requires you to down below the end of main to actually have a full typed out function named display title, in this case with a capital T. So I scroll down and there it is. So by dividing your labor like this and putting certain code in certain functions, it makes your code more so much better. There's like five or six ways that I could ask for you to explain in an essay. Read your textbook. Um, read any notes that I've provided to you. Um, it's, it's just really good to have code in functions. But you've got to declare them properly. You need to call them properly. And you need to have them typed out fully in the right ways. OK, I'm going to make, oh, well, as I wind down this video, let's look at what happens after display title. Um, there's a two second sleep timer, which because of this import here, in case you ever wanna use this in the future, you need that uh, statement way up there. And then the two is the number of seconds. And then display title gets called, which I'm just simply see outing proof. Hey, I'm on Mars. I'm in display title right now. And that's why that prints out Oh, I'm sorry, in display game board, and then so on. So the order up here doesn't matter. And really, to tell you the truth, the order of the typed out functions does not matter. It's all about what order your call statements are. So I want to finish out this video by just messing around with it. And I encourage you to mess around with it so that you it locks in this knowledge of how everything works from top down, but the call statements send you to these functions where you do what the function tells you, and then you go back to where you were in the, the function that called that function. Okay, so let's mess around with this. First of all, I emphasize that the order of the declarations don't matter, but don't try to mess with people by putting them in a weird order. Like, I don't know why you would like display, now there's, there's reasons for everything that you could like come up with, but Displaying the developer info might not be, make sense to have it above display title, but it doesn't really matter. I'm mixing these up permanently. And now I run this and it still works with the same output that I had before. And I would not take off points if you had these in the wrong order here, in a different order, I'll just say. So uh, command Z to undo does work in Replit here. And now Humpty Dumpty's back the way it was. The next point I want to make here in this quick video. Um, don't forget the semicolons here. It's very easy to forget these semicolons. And look at the error that happens if you do forget one of them. 
it tells you, well, expect a semicolon. That's easy. But down here, below end of main, you do not put a semicolon in the spot that kind of looks like the function declaration statement here. This will also ruin your project. And it tells you that there's a bad curly brace, but that's not really the problem. It's this extra semicolon here. So be careful not to do that. This line of code right here on line 16, that's called the function declaration statement. Sometimes we call it the function prototype. But down here, this similar looking line of code is called the function's header. It's the first line of the actual function. Because you see the curly braces and everything indented for good style inside of it, that's the body of the function. So you have a head and a body. And the body sometimes has you know, five to 10 lines of code, but not a lot. Functions usually have a very single-minded purpose. And they're always indented, the code's indented for good style. And if you really have good style, you, you kind of put this like little end of marker, like end of main, so that other people know where one ends and where the other one begins. Because some people, they don't use blank lines for nice code organization. Some people, they plant their vegetables way too close to each other in a garden, and they don't get the fruitful uh, set of, you know, uh, vegetables that, that I get, which I don't get any because I don't plant in a garden. But if I did, I would spread out my, uh, my stuff. Okay, so putting those blank lines back because it just hurts my eyes to see everything crammed up like that. Okay, I'm almost finished. The order of the actual typed out functions that are typed out nicely down here below a little signpost comment statement that says all the functions are down here. They, the order of them down here doesn't matter. So that one I'm moving and I'm putting it down below all the other ones and I'll sh prove to you that this still works. It still works as it was before. It's all about the order of the call statements up here. Another, uh, I mean, it's bad style maybe if you are really fussy about your the order of things in your typed out code, but it doesn't affect the way the program runs. Which right now I got to quickly put Humpty Dumpty back so that I don't mess up my example for the future. And right now I'm having real slow computer problems so um, I know this is a long video now. OK, uh, you know what? That's really annoying me, having this two second timer. So I'm going to create a variable called, well, int delay, set it equal to just like 0 0.5, and use delay in every spot where I had a 2. So this is a nice little efficiency that if you do any of this in any project in this course, having one variable somewhere or a constant even would make it easier to quickly change your program. And in this case, save some time real quickly uh, by just changing uh, that one occurrence. And because it's 0.5, it needs to be the double data type. So now we get a, a real quick delay, which is all I need. So quick, you didn't even see that the, there was a pause in between. OK, the other point I want to make is some people that are learning this, they type out their functions like this display title, and they put them inside the curly braces of main. No, you can't do that. I mean, you can, but in other situations that I don't teach. You can't type out the body of a function inside another function. You can't put display title inside of main. It's not going to work. If it does work, you're lucky, and it's not working for the right reason. So don't do that uh, by accident. And last of all, there's another common mistake. A lot of people, not, not a lot, some, when they call a function, like this right here, that, that perfectly nicely executes the code that's indented down here inside the body, and it makes it print out in display title like hello world. Well, some people, they type the word void here. 
And what does void mean anyway? Well, I'll explain. By typing void here, it's not what you want. And if it works, it's not working for the right reason. So in a way, the rest of the program's working, but but display title's not work, showing up. So it's not truly working correctly. Well, void simply means that that function that it's typed out in front of, it means that it does not return any numbers or data. So if you had return zero there, then you would not put void, you would have to put int because zero is a whole number. If you, for some reason, return the amount of tax on something, let's just say I'm returning like 0.6 because you owe me 60 cents tax, then you would put the data type double there. If you were returning like somebody's name as a what's called a string that we learn about later in double quotes, then you would type string instead of int or double. But if you are not returning anything, then you put void and you can't put nothing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that gives you an error message. Let me check. Yeah, you, you can't put nothing there. You have to type the word void. Void means nothing. Now we learn later about more about these return statements, but right now I just want to like clarify the point of that void. You can actually type return semicolon. As long as you don't put anything after the end there, it will technically work with just the word return. I'll leave that one in there. As a, just as a reminder that that's legal if you see other people do that in the internet. Okay, uh, I hope that answers some questions about function declarations, function call statements, the functions uh, definition itself, which is all of that, the functions header, which is the first line of its, func of its function definition, and then the body, which is the part below the header. And one last thing, you should always explain the purpose of a function with a nice little comment such as this, even if the name of the function was what was correctly like named, so it's like ex explanatory. It never hurts to over document your code as a beginner. Okay, that's a wrap. The program runs and uh, have fun hack uh, messing with it and email me if you have any questions.